needs points. al Qaeda always wants points. I think he's a very popular figure, Omar al Shaheen, around the other players. They all seem to genuinely like him. Yeah, and he's fantastic in every respect, isn't he? He's coming from a country that hasn't had many big names in the game. That's obviously good. And uh, it was wonderful to see him do so well at the World Championship last year, to see that someone could come out of the supporting pack, as it were, and have such an extended run in such a big event. So a lot of positive vibes around Al Shaheen and his presence in the upper echelons of the world game. And it wasn't just a one-off, really, that World Championship run. He had some decent results the rest of the year after that. So it looks like someone who's going to be around for some time. Be 30 later this year. Talking about positive vibes, I can tell you Eklund Kachi now leads Miesko Fuchunski 4-3. That's on table two. Looks like a different animal tonight, doesn't he, Kachi? Don't know what was going on with him this morning. His head clearly was nowhere near the right place, but he's looked very different this evening. We've seen a number of extraordinary breaks over the course of the three days, and that was another one of them. Omar Al Shaheen pulverized them. He was someone who'd been knocking on the door of becoming a prominent player for some time. Been steadily building signs of consistency just before the COVID shutdown. He'd had a very good Derby City Classic in early 2020. As we know, a few weeks later, the world changed and he was one of those players who lost all that momentum. But he's picked it up again since the calendar has really started to crank back into gear. Just got a little too deep into the cue ball off the two. Not enough pace either. But the three just about struggles in. And the four goes down the rail. Well, that would have been nothing more than a bonus, really. Doesn't make any great difference that the nine just stayed on the table. No chance whatsoever of him missing from here. I think this might be the easiest nine ball to win a rack I have ever seen. He doesn't mind. The easier, the better. Omar Al Shaheen takes the first against David Al Qaeda in pretty rapid fashion. So we're at the start of this match. We're coming towards the conclusion of the match on table two. But there's more pool to be played because Fiesco, Miesco Fortunski has the nine ball to go hill hill. Which is played. But a match you win tonight could have real big significance, significance because of the the points going forward later on in the week. The break. Training one now. So yeah. we'll turn a break and al Qaeda gets to break off in rack two. Yeah, I was just going to pick up on that point. Once you've got past the point of securing your place in phase two, it's like you're already playing for your place in phase three, even before the first phase is over. Some players could go into that second phase. We have to think almost certainly some will with their place in the last day. 
near enough secured already. But there's always something to play for, because if you do get to the third phase, it's six players, but only four of those will go into the knockout. And there's a prize money differential between every place, 16th, a little inferior to 15th, and so on. So incentives are built in. Reminds me of that slogan for the Nations League football when it was first played a couple of years ago, every match counts. It was promotion and relegation. And then when it was all over, they just reorganised all the divisions anyway, so a lot of the matches hadn't counted for anything. But that won't be happening here. actually beaten very early on in that world championship by Lucius Yap in only his second match. Could hardly have had a more low-key start to that remarkable run. He played Alain de Costa of France and beat him 9-0. But after losing to Yap, he won a match on the loser's side. As I say, survived two Hill Hill finishes in a row and then started to pick up the pace. Beat Nikos Economopoulos, two-time Moscone Cup player. Then Thomas Kaplan, and finally Oliver Sholnocki, 11-9, to get to that final. One consistent failing of Omar Hal Shaheen over the last three days. On these four-inch pockets, it pays not to hit the balls too hard unless you simply have to. And he enjoys putting pace into the ball. Yeah, he gives it a real thump, doesn't he? We saw that with his break, actually, in the opening rack. Tonski is uh, in play in the deciding rack on the other table. He's got the one and has a look at the two. Now, as the cue ball was coming up the table, it was debatable whether he blocked Al Shaheen, and I think he has. I think the white is directly on the three. Indeed, there's your answer. Always the chief priority is to make contact. Yeah, if you have to leave a chance on, don't leave it with ball in hand. At least leave the possibility that there'll be a bit more positional work to do, which with ball in hand, there generally isn't. There, got nowhere near the three. He could still continue this break. Well, he played the billiard. And to be candid, he wasn't even close. Yeah, and then you're seeing the benefits of the fact that when Al Shaheen left that chance on the two, at least he did make contact, as we were saying. Ultimately, ultimately, it left Al-Qaeda out of position, took on the difficult shot. And in the end, it's Al Shaheen who's got the chance, but he's passed it up straight away. What a dreadful miss, Phil. Yes, especially where they are now. That's been the key with him over the, the three days. Inconsistent at times. He's played some really good racks and then played some stinkers. Fortunsky has just potted the seven. He's got an eight nine combination, which I have to say looks completely unmissable to complete victory over Eklund Kachi. A 
And with that, Fortunski gives the fist pump to mark his second win. Yes, and for him, it's not all doom and gloom because he's only played seven matches. So he has matches on hand, or he's on equal matches with everyone in the table. Yes, having lost his first five, he's now won two in a row, and he's still got one more to play tonight against Shane Van Boning. That's for Eklund Kachi. Well, he's now second bottom of the table. Yeah, slides to 15th out of 16. Who could have foreseen that? As al Katie goes about the, the relatively routine business of tying the scores. Well, Shaheen's going to be sick, isn't he? He could have been breaking at 2-0 up. Really bad miss, though. And he's paid the full price for us. As you would expect would be the case against al -Qaedi. We always say, doesn't make many unexpected mistakes. Does the simple things very... There's actually a really good bond there between those two because it was Kelly who gave him the pep talk after his semi-final victory in the World Tour Masters last year. He wasn't happy with his performance, even though he got a favourable outcome. And she gave him some tough love and he went on and whitewashed Shane Van Boning in the final. Yeah, she's so well liked among the players. get to know her you find out why she's just so down to earth just absolutely loves Q sports and the whole scene that goes with it hope she was on a percentage good prize money for winning that tournament yes I wrote the report for that tournament for Billiards Digest and I think I suggested exactly the same thing. Just got lost in the, the moment, or more to the point, the half moment. So when the 10 second warning came, he immediately took his extension. A decision that could be vindicated. Very consistent throughout last year. And that was how he got himself back into the Moscone Cup team and was one of the stars of it. Arguably the best player of the week. Has an extraordinary history in the Europe versus USA contest. First played in it all the way back in 2006. 
didn't make the team again for 11 years and was then absent for another four until his return back in December. Already eyeing up. Yes, when al Qaeda made his debut in the Moscone Cup, it was played in Rotterdam in the, the Netherlands, and uniquely, it ended in a 12-12 draw. How was that allowed to happen? Yeah, well, it can't happen now. It's uh, basically they play until someone reaches 11. I always think it's unsatisfactory with things like that, where you have a tie when okay. it isn't necessary. Anyway, David al Qaeda has made that combination and he leads Omar al Shaheen 2 1. More in a moment. It's one of those evenings where you need four pairs of eyes because there's so much going on. David Akeda is leading the match by two reps to one hundred. We're focusing on table one, where David al winning habit could well be extended. Alex Kazakis has just missed the nine in the opening rack against Kelly Fisher. He looks set now to cut it in from distance, which she has done, so she leads one nil against the man who'll be defending his World Masters title in Gibraltar, as we now know, in uh, May. Yes, the Kazakis nine ball. I'm not saying it was an absolute gimme, but it really was a, a poor mistake for a player of his calibre. Well, look at this. You know the old phrase that's used in daily life? Behind the eight ball. This really is. I'm glad you brought that up, Phil, because I always thought being behind the eight ball meant you had an opportunity. But now it seems to be used more as you're under pressure and in trouble. I'm a bit confused about it because I've definitely heard it used in both contexts. For me, I think it's definitely in modern parlance, the, the latter. Yeah, but when have you ever been modern, Phil? True. Combination here, perhaps? I think he had a look. Well, if he did, he opted against it. Bit of 
distance between the balls, apart from anything else. Yeah, just to tidy that up, eight ball, which was the more traditional form of the game over the years in Britain. Nine ball obviously making big strides now. That would make sense, wouldn't it? Because if you're behind the eight ball in English pool, then you've arrived at the moment of opportunity. This needed a deft touch. And what a cracking shot that is. Now this will be tough to escape from, very tough. Especially tucking the two next to the seven. Ten seconds. Stroke. Yeah, not Point. surprised in the slightest. The two will pot, and the table is wide open. Underlining again what we were saying earlier. He made contact there. Mightn't have been so straightforward, but with ball in hand. We could back OKD all day long to go 3-1 here. Now, this is the shot he has to be careful on. There is quite a large margin of error. But in potting the five, it's not inconceivable Second. he could snooker himself on the six. You can tell from his body language, he's OK. We mentioned Gibraltar earlier, talking about the World Masters. It's very near where David Alcady lives. And he entered the qualifying for the Gibraltar Open Snooker, which is a world ranking tournament three years ago. Came through it, took a frame off Dave Gilbert, who's been a World Championship semi-finalist. Was beaten 4 1. Francisco Sanchez Ruiz, of course, managed to win a match there and then take a couple of frames off Ken Doherty. So the Spaniards show their all round Q Sports ability that week. And I think we can expect Q Sports crossover the other way when we get to the UK Open in May. Some snooker players will definitely be on display there. Well, Judd Trump, for sure, he went all the way to the US. You would think he'd play in his home country, although it will just be immediately after the World Snooker Championship. I still fancy him to be there. So, David Alcady, it was all about laying that really fiendish trap. Omar Al Shaheen made the foul and then sat down. Now, this rack has been eventful on table two. We get down to the fact that Kelly Fisher needs. The seven and the nine to double her lead. Not the cleanest of pots, but it goes in. And when you're under pressure, when there's a lot riding on it, these thin cuts can be a little tough. Plus, the stance is clearly awkward. The Kelly Fisher story just gets more and more interesting. 2-0 up on Alexander Kazakis now. Yeah, she must have been really stretching there because John Lehman, all the way through the shot, was looking down at her feet. 
quite sure she kept one on the floor. Anyway, she's negotiated that task. It's really growing into this tournament. She did say at the start that she did have hopes of getting through to the second phase, but really the main objective was just to get a few wins. Bigger ambitions now. Well, trailing, Al Shaheen needed a good break there. But I'm afraid the two has done him no favours. Or more precisely, the seven in front of the two has done him no favours. He's behind the seven ball. Extension. And it's not. Oh, magnificent. That really is so good. And a look at the three. First, it looked like a friendly flick off the nine. Then it looked distinctly the opposite. And having avoided the scratch, he can still pot this four. One of the strengths of his game when he came so close to winning the World Nine Vault Championship last year was potting from distance. Kept that one simple. There is no denying the battling qualities of Omar Al Shaheen. Good rack, highlighted by the jump shot and glued together by the fact he didn't quite scratch when that would have been rather disastrous. And so David Al Kedi's lead is cut in half. Tactical exchange to begin rack three on table two. Yeah, we've been talking about five being the mark you need. That may well be enough to get you through. And I think the feeling is if you get six, you'd be very unlucky to miss out. So Kazakis can tip himself over into the sixth category if he wins this. Fisher can get to five. But the point is they've both still got quite a few matches left to play. Fisher would still have another seven. So even if she did need one more win to make absolutely sure, you have to fancy she'd get it somewhere along the way. to take care of this match first though and she's left a chance for Kazakis. He produced what was basically a flawless performance earlier. And his win over Noyuki Oi. But I think, by his own admission, he isn't the most dependable of players. He can be very good at times. But at others, you're not really sure you're watching the same player.
Showed to have plenty of confidence at the moment, though, after winning a big event in America last week. I love the way these rests, these bridges are so versatile. You can use them in so many different ways. That way provided elevation. So as Kazakis goes his merry way, let's go back to table one and let's see if David Alcady breaking off in rack six can move a couple of racks ahead again. He saw the ball go in. Then all he was concerned about was the, the route of the two. It's come all around into open play. The position of the, the four and the nine. That could cause a, a headache or two. Yeah, and that's something he's going to have to face immediately after this shot. The three already having disappeared. Just hoping the cue ball beats the nine. I think it just about did. Just about. Alcady turns away in disgust, but I think he's still got a, a viable potting attempt. Yes, I think al Qaeda's reaction after the previous shot was a little premature. He was OK, wasn't he? Yeah, I think maybe just a little frustrated at having given himself a bit more to do than he might have liked, but that never really looked like too much of a problem. So, yeah, I think you're right. On the 50-yard line there, though. Betwixt and between. Neither one thing or the other. Too hard for one kind of position. Not too hard for the other. We see it time and time again. The uncompromising nature of these middle pockets. They are so tight. Now, KD overcut that. And speaking of tight, he was getting tight for time there. And would have ideally liked to have an extension there just to ease the pressure slightly. Of course, he'd used it up just a few moments earlier. Extension, please. So these could be big moments in this match. Well, Shaheen was 3-1 down, remember? And now it looks like he's going to be level at 3-all and breaking. It was all about one iffy positional shot. Then the pot was difficult, it was missed. And picking up the pieces was Omar Al Shaheen. It is 3-3. What started out as the best of nine racks is now down to best of three.
so many matches over the course of the three days of action here at Stadium MK for this Predator Q's Premier League pool have gone quite deep, either 5-3 or 5-4. Add this one to the list. The advantage, though, lies with Omar Al Shaheen because he's got at least one break, possibly two to come. So the first of those breaks doesn't turn out too badly. Alexander Kazakis was 2-0 down to Kelly Fisher on the other side of the arena. He's just leveled at two each. Good pop there from Al Shaheen and also did well to avoid the traffic. Go behind the eight ball and back out into mid table. Very nearly an abrupt end there to the rack. The nine really flirting with that pocket. Having been flicked by the eight, you see it again there. Positionally, it's been adventurous. If the five ball goes in, the hard work will have been done. A thinner cut than that might have appeared. Well, Katie looked to be cruising along nicely in this match at 3-1 up. Things have started to go against him since then. be facing the very real prospect of back-to-back -back defeats having lost earlier to Mieszko Fortunski Omar Al Shaheen looking to get to four points and into the top ten the end of this round robin the top 10 will qualify for the next phase an important match for him and things are going nicely certainly in the middle portion of it so we've seen a comeback from Al Shaheen there and we're seeing one from Alexander Kazakis on table two Kelly Fisher locked up you can see the one ball in behind the seven And it's the seven she makes contact with. Could be a costly mistake, that Michael. Yeah, very similar to Al Qaeda. The tide is turning against her here. She's been involved in some eventful matches, some close finishes over the three days. Point is, even if she loses, if it offered her being on four wins after eight matches, which would be the position then, she'd have absolutely taken that. Yes, because even if Omar Al Shaheen were to win here, that would be four wins from nine. Well, what a time to come up dry.
Early on today, we saw a lot of dry breaks in our opening match. Alusha Shap had three consecutive dry breaks in losing to Naoki Oi. As the days progressed, they've become quite rare. So for that one to crop up at that untimely moment, Al Shaheen must feel a little aggrieved as he pushes out. If you can hear some noise from the other side of the arena, I think there was some kind of dispute or confusion about Alexander Kazakis calling an extension, which he definitely did. The timekeeper heard us say it was my error. The significance of that to what we're watching is that the two tables are quite close together. So that little bit of a conversation could be heard. But the conversation had stopped well before Al Shaheen missed the two. Yeah, and Alexander Kazakis has put it to one side to continue the turnaround of that match against Kelly Fisher. He now leads 3-2. Extension. Two off the nine, but look where the cue ball is going to come to rest. There's a blockade on the road to the three. Thankfully for al the the three is masked again. An interesting match, hasn't it? Very little's been straightforward. Been lots of little narratives along the way, unexpected misses, strokes of fortune, both good and bad. Now, this should be a natural positional shot from three to four. Even though the two balls concerned were at opposite ends of the table.
Jumped up to a certain degree. Knew he was taking the five off the cushion, and it's worked out okay. There's a, a clear path past the eight. This time intentionally using the, the seven ball to stop the white. Looks like another match is going to go hill hill. Yeah. Good news for Al Shaheen is that he'll have the break. Talking about all the Hill Hill finishes. Well, Okadi has had eight matches so far. And none of them has gone the distance. Al Shaheen, on the other hand, had six Hill Hill finishes in a row at one stage. Well, that's what you call having your money's worth. Only one, two of those six. David Alcady. We are going the distance here. David Alcady of Spain, Omar Al Shaheen of Kuwait are now inseparable at 4 4. But the next rack will separate them. There's a wave of momentum for Alexander Kazakis on the other table. He wants 2-0 down. He's just in the process of taking a 4-2 lead over Kelly Fisher. Yeah, and of course, that match will be followed by Alban Ocean against Joshua Filler which, among other things, will decide who will be the last remaining unbeaten player. Both won all eight so far. Kazakis not unbeaten, but doing pretty nicely. I think if he wins this match, his place in the, the leading ten to go into phase two will be under lock and key. Kazakis and one of the players involved in our match on table one will forever be linked. They played that extraordinary World Pool Masters final, didn't they? Three years ago in Gibraltar, Kazakis led 5-0, 8-5, lost 9-8 as David Alcady doubled the nine ball length of the table. Well, first priority off the break, obviously, is to pot something. Second priority is to hopefully have a chance of potting something else. But if you don't have that, the very least you want is the opportunity to establish tactical control. And that's what Al Shaheen has done with that shot. Extension call.
the golden ticket not just out of the snooker placing Al Shaheen in one what a result Alex Kazakis has just played a jump shot to pop the one followed it by banking the two and is nicely on the three with a chance to close it out from there and complete a 5-2 win over Kelly Fisher I thought for a moment that Al Shaheen was going to return the compliment and get a, a snooker back that's not the case but at least he's achieved distance between white and one well the two ball went down off the break so position from one to three not easy Alexander Kazakis Should have an easy task of completing victory on table two, though. Just eight and nine needed. And Kelly Fisher will have succumbed. And with six wins, Kazakis is going to be right up among the front runners top of the table still in perhaps with an outside chance of even finishing top of this first phase but he's left himself a little tester he has been known to to miss this kind of ball not on this occasion oh ye have little faith knocked it in sweetly and so Alexander Kazakis after a faltering start trailed 2-0 wins five racks in succession and he defeats Kelly Fisher 5-2 as Michael said next up on table two is that eagerly awaited contest between Albin Ashen and Joshua Filler I just notice on the other table they seem to be continuing that debate they were having earlier about the extension call been a day of a few controversies for John Lehman, who was refereeing that match. And look at this. What a time to scratch. What a chance for Omar Al Shaheen. Start the clock, please. Sky. Can we just. Fight? Actually, Marcel Eckhart, who's refereeing on table one, but had a polite request to the two players and the referee on table two to pipe down. And he's been involved in controversy himself recently, that time foul business with Jeremy Jones at the Moscone Cup. Though of course, he was absolutely correct in the way he applied that rule. And he could feel the anxiety coming off the arm and the cue of Al Shaheen. Job not quite done yet. But this is a chance to finish the day with four wins out of nine. And every chance to get through from there wasn't looking so good earlier in the day. When he lost from 4-1 up against Alban Ocean, still only had two wins on the board at that stage. But he beat Max Lechner. And now a chance to make it back-to-back -back wins for the first time in this tournament. It wasn't convincing queuing on either six or seven. The eight was better. And the nine goes home. Omar Al Shaheen emerging as a lively contender to make the top 10 when it matters most here on Friday night. Vital win for him. He defeats David Alcady by five racks to four.
Coming up after the break, it's the fourth match of the evening on Table 1, and it features Alusha Schiap against Shane Van Boning. <laughs>